for another math lesson today. So I'm so happy you're here. So let's do what we always do. Grab some paper, a pencil, hopefully you have a journal. And if you have any markers or highlighters, those are always helpful. But go ahead and grab all your supplies. Hopefully you already have them and we will get started on another math lesson today. Great. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to get that done. Okay, awesome. Always be prepared. Okay, so today, as you can see behind me, we are going to discuss equivalent fractions. Okay, I want to say that again. Equivalent fractions. So, you have very likely heard this word before. You might just need to remember what it is. So let's think about that. Equivalent. Equivalent. So, if you take a look at that word equivalent, it sounds like equal, right? It sounds like equal, and that's good because this is what we're talking about today. It's finding fractions that are equal. They're fractions that are equal, and they represent the same part. Okay, so that's what you're going to do today is we're going to take a look at equivalent fractions. And I have this really great vocabulary card that I want to look at together just so we set the stage for what we're about to learn. So equivalent fractions. So notice... They chopped up the word here to show that equivalent, it's part over whole. This is part of a word, right? And it's going to equal the fraction, so equivalent fraction. So basically, they're different fractions that represent the same number. Let's read that again together. Different fractions that represent the same number. So think about what that really means. Different, well, how can they be the same thing if they're different? Well, they're not actually different. They just look different. They're not different because they're the same value. So let's break this down, and I think it'll make sense. But I wanted to show this to you, and I'll hold this up again at the end of the video so we can come back to this. So uh, if you want to pause the video now and write this down in your notes, that's a great idea. So you have a definition of what we're doing today. So if you want to pause right now, you can copy this down to write that equivalent fractions are different fractions that represent the same number. And they give you an example here. One half is equal to two fourths. Okay, so pause and write this down. Okay, after you've come back to the video, we're going to review some basic things about fractions. And it's always good to come back to the basics because that's where we start. Once we start building upon our knowledge, it's, it's based on what we already know. So what do we already know? We already know that fractions are parts of a whole. So let's look at that. That is a whole. It has a one right there, parts of a whole. This is a half because it's half of a whole. So we're using, in this poster, circles to represent wholes. So if a whole circle is one, then half of a circle is half. You can also use a rectangular shape or a strip, like a fraction bar, to represent this. And you can see that half of it's shaded in yellow. So that would be a half. As we continue on in fractions, we continue to divide up the whole into more and more and more pieces. Isn't that what fractions are, right? So the more we divide it, the smaller the pieces get. I really like this poster because it lets you see that. That's why I'm showing it to you. So here, we divided the whole into three. And you can see they've done that by showing us all three pieces, but only one is shaded. Therefore, this is one third. Same here just in a different format. So we have circles and we have bars. Okay, look at one fourth. Now the pieces are getting smaller. Look, this was a third, a fourth is getting smaller. A fifth, even smaller. One sixth, even smaller. And notice what's happening with our denominators. What is happening with our denominators? They're getting larger. And some people confuse that and say, well, Miss Smith, I mean, if this number is getting bigger, shouldn't the value be getting larger? No, it just means we're breaking it into more pieces. And so if you break things into more pieces, each piece is getting smaller. Same here, one eighth, one tenth, and one twelfth. So I'm gonna leave this up for you because I think no one, no matter how you, good you get at math, reminding yourselves of what fractions truly are is never a waste of time. So I'm going to put this up here for your reference. Okay, so you can see it as we move along. Okay, so fractions are parts of a whole. So let's do a little review of some terminology. So 
you write this down, we're going to review some important things that, once again, are never too, you, you can't review too much, right? So let's just touch base. Because sometimes when we go to sleep and we wake up, sometimes we forgot a couple things that, excuse me, that we might have learned the day before, so, or weeks before. So it's, we always want to come back to our, our knowledge. So the, let's review basically just something really simple, okay? When we have a fraction such as two-thirds, I just made that up, you can write that down, this top part is called a what? Numerator, numerator, hopefully you already know that, but again, we're just going back and kind of refreshing ourselves, and the bottom number is called the denominator. So those are academic vocabulary words that you've heard of since we have been learning fractions, since third grade actually. So third, fourth, and fifth, we really start working and moving and changing and re-representing fractions in many different ways. So numerator and denominator, got it. Okay, so I'm gonna just leave that there for a second. So what we're about to do is do some things to both the numerator and the denominator to help us with equivalent fractions. So let me put this back up here for those of you that paused the video. I'm going to give you a minute to write that down. And for equivalent fractions, I'm just going to put this here and I'll let you see it closer later. But let's go back. We are finding different fractions that represent the same number. Okay? So numerator, denominator. And the way that I remember which one's the denominator is the word denominator starts with the word D. And I always think, oh, the one that's down below, like down starts with D. The one that's down below is the one that is, uh, the one that's down below is the one that, the denominator. So that's how I remember it, okay? So go ahead and jot this down. I'm going to uh, turn off this air conditioner and I'll be right back. So maybe you have a great way of remembering which one's the numerator and which one's the denominator, but I just have my whole life remembered it, that if it's the number that's down below this line, it's the denominator. So if you haven't found a way, hopefully that helps you. Okay, so that was our review of certain things. Now for equivalent fractions. Why do we even need them? Why? Why do I need them? Why? Okay, that's great, Miss Smith. You are going to teach us how to do equivalent fractions, but why do I even need them? Okay, and the purpose of using equivalent fractions is so we can add and subtract fractions that don't have similar denominators. And let me tell you what the true problem here is, right? So we need to be able to take fractions such as these. I always use my fraction bars. I think they're so helpful. They're different colors. They help you understand. For example, if I want to add one half plus one third Look at that. They're different sizes. They're different size fractions. So it's really difficult to try to add those without coming up with a common denominator. And we'll do that in the next lesson. Lowest common denominator, that kind of thing. We'll do that next. But today is about understanding why we need those equivalent fractions. They help us understand, they help us get to a point where we can add and subtract fractions that have unlike denominators because that's that's where we're headed guys we're trying to look at fractions of all different sizes look at all these different sizes if I want to add one fifth to one sixth it's not that simple because they're different sizes if you look a one third plus a one sixth I can't just add these two and say I have two fractions let me show you how it would work when we try to add it the wrong way so say for example I want to add one half, this is one half, you can write this down with me, plus one third. So what you're noticing now is they have unlike denominators. So let me review that all over again. Okay, hold that thought and I'm going to show you an example. Watch this. This is what you should already know how to do. One third plus two thirds. I can do that 
Because these are what? These are like denominators. They are just like each other. They are just like each other. Yes, they are. And so it is, they're just like each other. So I can just simply add them together. I could say that one third, here's a one third, and I can take two thirds. These are two thirds. Look, they're all the same size and shape. I can add these together and say I have three thirds, which equals one whole. And we can test it here. Okay. When our denominators have like, they're alike. When our fractions, I should say, have like denominators, it is very simple to just add them together. We can do that. They're the same shape. They're the same um, size. Everything's easy and clean. One, two, three. I have three thirds. Okay. But the challenge becomes when our denominators are unlike. For example, let me take one that's easy to see. One fifth plus one third. Notice my denominators are no longer like. So what's the opposite of like? Unlike, right? So look at these. I'm circling them so you can see them. Five and three are unlike denominators. So write that down. Unlike denominators. So here's the whole purpose of why we're here today together. We have to find ways to make our denominators like denominators if they're, if they're unlike. If they don't match, they're unlike each other, we have to make them like each other. And I'm not going to do it by using a magic trick. I'm going to do it by using equivalent fractions, which I'm going to teach you how to do today. Okay? It's really easy. It's really easy. So it will help you combine and sub, you know, add and subtract and do all kinds of things with fractions. Once you kind of clean them up and make them look like each other, which is basically a regular way to explain equivalent fractions. So we're going to walk through this together, okay? Here we go. So let's keep our example of one-fifth and one-third. I'm just going to erase so that you can see, but this should still be in your notes, okay? So once again, we're going to take a look at a number like one-fifth. Let's start with one-fifth. Okay, leave that one here. I'm trying to add one-fifth and one-third, these together. And I can't just add them across. I can't just say 1 plus 1 is 1 and 5 plus 3 is 8 because then I would get 2 eighths. And watch. If you just added 1 fifth and 1 third and said, okay, well, I don't need, really need to worry about the fact that they're not like. I'm just going to add them. 1 plus 1 is 2. 5 plus 3 is 8. So let me show you why this is wrong. I'm going to put wrong there because in case somebody's joining our video right now, I don't want them to think that this is correct. So this is the wrong way, and I'm proving it to you. I'm proving to you why one-fifth plus one-third does not work. Okay, so if we said, well, let's just add them across. It doesn't really matter. Who cares that they're not like? Let's just add them all up and be done with it, okay? Sometimes students do that. But notice, if I did that, I would say, I would think that my answer was two-eighths. But let me show you why you'd be wrong. One-eighth, two-eighths. That's what you just told me. You said two-eighths. Is the com is the sum of these two numbers, and you can clearly see that's not true. That's too small. It's too small. It did, the green and the black do not add up to two of these, so that doesn't work. Okay, so that is wrong. So what we're gonna do is find an equivalent fraction for each of these, and once we have an equivalent fraction that matches each of the denominators, we can add them. That'll be in the next lesson, but today I want you to practice equivalent fractions. And I'm going to give you one simple rule, and it'll work every time. There's no exceptions to this rule. So the rule is for equivalent fractions. I'm going to move this, okay? So equivalent fractions. Write that down again. I'm going to write down the rule for you. The rule is... To find the equivalent fraction, you must
must multiply or divide the numerator and denominator by the same multiple. Okay, and I'm going to show you how that works. But I think it's so important to have like the official rules. So basically, to find the equivalent fraction, which is what we're working on, you must multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator, so both the top and the bottom, by the same multiple, okay? By the same multiplication number. And it's going to be really easy to see, okay? So write this down. Go ahead and pause this video if you need to take a moment to write that down. That rule is very important. It's basically adding, let me write this down as well. So I like to say basically, basically, which means in an easier way, um, multiply or divide the top and bottom number numbers by the same thing. So this is like the kid speak definition, right? Sometimes students put things in their own words. That's okay. It needs to make sense to you. So this is kind of what the basically part is, right? You're basically multiplying, dividing the top and the bottom by the same thing. So the rule, look at all these words. This is why I love numbers, right? Numbers are just easy. We can just like do stuff with them. So pause the video if you need to take a moment to, uh, if you need to write that down, okay? So we're going to be multiplying the top and bottom by the same thing. That's it. That's all we're doing, guys. It's so easy, okay? So I'm going to erase this because we're going to practice a few together. So let's start with our first example. And we're going to do several and then be done. This whole lesson is just about understanding that to get an equivalent fraction, all you have to do is multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing or divide if it's a larger fraction. Okay. Let's do this. This is so easy. Watch. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is so easy. And over here, if you've already noticed, I have some posters. And these are equivalent fractions of, let me move this. These are equivalent fractions of one whole, one half, one third, and one fourth. And I'll pull those out in a moment, but these are cool little posters I have. So let's take a look at a number like, um, let's try one third. Okay, so we're going to find the equivalent fraction for one third. And look how easy it is. I literally just said in that room, multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. It's that easy. Watch. One third. I'm going to multiply one third by two. Times two times two. That's it. The top and the bottom, numerator and denominator, are being multiplied by the same thing. One third both the top and the bottom, we multiply. So let's just do it. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Hello. Look how easy that is. Equivalent fractions. That, it's that easy, guys. It's literally that easy. So you're taking a fraction and you're finding it. So I'm going to prove it to you using a visual representation before we move on to the next example. So 1 third, right here, see, I have a 1 third. And we said it's equivalent to 2 6. Let's try. 1 6, 2 6. Does, that's amazing. And how cool is that? Halloween colors, because we're literally in October. So, 1 third equals to 2 6. Equivalent fractions, once again, right here. Look at that. It works perfectly. Different fractions. Do we have different fractions? Look, I can show you both. Different fractions that represent the same number. They're the same number. They're the same size. And we're about to prove it over and over and again. And you will never have questions or worry about equivalent fractions again. And this will really help you in our next lesson when we start adding and subtracting 
with unlike denominators because you'll just find the equivalent fraction of a to make them common and add them. It's going to really come together. Okay, so what you've done now is proven that one third equals two sixths. All right, let's try another number. Let's try two eighths. Okay, and I'm going to multiply it by the same number. It could be any number at all. So I could try three. Two times three. Oh, wait, that's too big because I need to prove it to you. Let's do two again. Times two times two. Two times two is four. Eight times two is sixteen. So we are saying that two eighths is equivalent to four sixteenths. So let's prove it. I actually have sixteen parts. Two eighths. This is where I got it. Two eighths. I want to know if it's equivalent, meaning the same value as 4 sixteenths. So, 1 sixteenth, notice, let me just show these to you real quick. Notice my sixteenths are very small because remember when we looked at our fraction poster here? Remember this one? The smaller the denominator, the more we're chopping up the whole. So since these are sixteenths, that means that I took my whole circle, or my whole bar, here, and I cut it into sixteen pieces. So of course they're going to be tiny, right? So my sixteenths are very small because there's so many of them, right? It's like sharing with more and more people, right? So if you have like a pizza, and if you're sharing it with two people, you're going to get a lot more pizza than if you're sharing with sixteen. So your pieces are going to get much smaller. So let's see if 2 eighths equals 4 sixteenths. 2 eighths, 1 sixteenth, 2 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths, 4 sixteenths. Perfect. It is equivalent because they represent the same number. And you can see they're the same number because they're the same size. These are just different ways to write the same thing. Let's try another. Let's try... Um, let's try, hmm, two, let's try one half, okay, and we're going to find the equivalent of it if we multiply it by four. Remember, you can multiply it by any number to get the equivalent. So if we multiply it a half times four, we should still get like half of something, right? But it's a different way. So 1 times 4 is 4, and 2 times 4 is 8. So now we need to prove that 1 half is the same thing as 4 eighths. All right, my 1 half, and it's saying it's 4 eighths. 1, 2, 3, 4 eighths. See? It's the same number. It's just written differently. So as long as I do the same thing to the top that I did to the bottom, I will always have an equivalent fraction. It also works the other way around. Watch. If we started with 4 eighths, you can go back. You can just flip-flop back and forth. So if I started with 4 eighths, and this time, remember back to our rule, we can add, I'm sorry, we can multiply or divide by the same multiple, by the same factor. So if I divide this by the same number, the same thing is going to happen. I'm starting with 4 eighths. 1, 2, 3, 4 eighths. This is my starting number. This time, instead of multiplying, I'm going to divide by the same number. It's just the multiplying and dividing are just opposites. So if I multiply, I can divide to go back to where I was. So if I divide these both by 2, remember it has to be the same thing that you do to the top, that you do to the bottom. So 4 divided by 2 equals 2, and four divi 8 divided by 2 equals 4. 2 fourths. So I should have 2 fourths, because I divided it by, so let's get our fourths. 1, 2, like that. I could get 2 fourths. I could also divide this by 4. Let's try that. If I divide both of them by 4, 
as long as it's the same thing, you will get an equivalent fraction. So here, check it out. I started again with 4 eighths, and I'm dividing them both by 4, and I will get 4 divided by 4 is 1, 8 divided by 4 is 2. So I should get that 4 eighths, which I already have here, should equal to 1 half, because I went the other way. And that is also true. So if you put all this together, you start noticing that there are many, many different types of equivalent fractions, right? You could make so many different kinds, but as long as you know that the general rule is that if you, add, if you multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing, you'll get an equivalent fraction. If you divide a fraction by the same thing, top and bottom, you will get an equivalent fraction. This is, it's, it's really a simple rule, okay? So I'm going to wrap this up. You guys did an amazing job today. Um, and I just want to take one more moment to show you this definition. An equivalent fraction is just a different fraction that represents the same value. So like in our case, two-fourths are representing a half. And they can also, it can also be represented by four-eighths and actually many other numbers. So, you're going to walk away from this lesson remembering that as long as I multiply the top and the bottom by the same number, my product of that will be equivalent to what I started with. If I divide by the same numbers, top and bottom, I'm going to get an equivalent fraction. And this is all going to be so helpful in our next lesson when we talk about adding and subtracting fractions. So, you guys did an amazing job. Take down all your notes. Um, review it. Show someone you know. Um, I think one of the best things you can do as a math student is show somebody something you've learned, right? Show someone something really cool that you learned and that you understand fractions on a new level. And just as I promised, I wanted to show you some of mine. In my classroom, I have this displayed and it shows you all the equivalent, common equivalent fractions of each one of these. So I have these here. These are wholes, and these are halves, thirds, and fourths. So you can also pause the video now, and you can take a look at some of those. So great job. As always, it's been such a pleasure to work with you today. I hope you learned how to uh, calculate equivalent fractions. And most importantly, I hope you show someone so that you can show them all of your new math knowledge. So fantastic job. Keep it up. And next time I see you, we're going to start using equivalent fractions to add and subtract. And it's just it's just going to flow so much easier because you've taken the time to learn this rule and practice a few examples. So you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you later.